So why Cisco Security? Well, I'm going to walk you through why. And we're going to cover a couple of highlights around innovation, analytics, cyber resilience, operational efficiency, while removing complexity. We'll talk about some of the strategic gap analysis that Cisco can perform. And then we'll talk about the investments and acquisitions they've made. Cisco will meet you where you are in your security journey. All right, innovation leadership. So a couple of highlights here. And again, this is not extensive, but we could talk about a little bit around extended detection or response. Some key differentiation here is third-party support that's in fact supported and validated and curated by Cisco. So if you have investments in some areas in your infrastructure today and you want to maximize those investments, even though they're not Cisco, Cisco's XDR can bring it into the platform. And if you have any challenges, you can certainly work through Cisco with that. So it's a supported integration versus a simple integration guide. And then you're on the hook for making it work. The AI SOC assistance here to help elevate the team, move some of the tier two capabilities down to tier one. We're getting more value out of the team sooner because AI is augmenting and accelerating their ability to respond and then progressive disclosure. So the ability to make sure that the right information's in the right hands at the right time, not overwhelming you with data. The other is HyperShield. So this is really innovative here. This is going to allow you to build controls whether it's physical, virtual, container in the cloud, doesn't matter. We can build in controls by understanding the applications and the risk tolerance to those applications, but not only build them, also ensure that when you go to deploy them, policy change or upgrade them, you're not actually impacting the environment. We have some really cool things around shadow data paths, which is a duplicate of the production data path. AI defense, something Cisco launched just recently, now this helps secure both the user facing side of AI tooling, like should you be using that tool, as well as the development back end. So things like making sure guardrails are in place, that you can't jailbreak them, and many other capabilities, including red teaming, some really cool innovative stuff here on the AI side. Now the other is secure access. We leverage QUIC and the MOSC protocol specifically to extend the ability to access private applications securely using native internet-based protocols. Now this allows you to remove the friction that's caused by VPN using a ZTA or zero trust access method. And the other thing that we do is unify the endpoint and make sure that these resource connectors that provide the services to these private applications are as close to the applications themselves, reducing latency. And finally, I'll call out Security Cloud Control. It's powered with AI Assistant to enable teams to address the complexity of managing all these different controls. Now think about this for one moment. You have a next generation firewall, you have a branch firewall, data center firewall, you have a host-based control, you have uh, security groups in the cloud, how are we managing this moving forward? We're gonna need some additional help to try to accelerate our ability to build the right controls in the right places at the right time. And this is where security cloud control starts to bring all of this back in so we can understand where are the controls in my environment and where best to put these controls. Again, really cool innovation happening here as well. Now, data-driven analytics advantage augmented with AI. In security, it's all about data. But data isn't just security, it's also observability. And they both are complementary to each other and provide an advantage. It helps teams be informed about business relevance and more importantly, the context of what might be happening when addressing risks. Now, artificial intelligence is powered by data. And so the Splunk acquisition was critically important for us to pull in that data, but that data now becomes a little bit more focused on the business in which it's protecting and serving, which gives additional relevance to the outcomes that can be delivered. Now, Cisco Threat Intelligence, as we know, is second to none in the industry, and the data analytics platform supports security network and application, as well as the lines of business. You can be really creative of what you build with the Splunk platform, and you can get additional telemetry within applications that may not be indicative of, of a traditional security element or risk, but now we can stitch these things together to get additional value. Enhanced cyber resilience and risk reduction. So we're all trying to drive towards risk reduction and ultimately be more resilient. Now, one of the things we all have to come to consensus with 
compromise is inevitable. And so we need to assume breach. If we take the idea of breach, we can build better security outcomes from that position. Now, platform-based approach certainly is gonna help minimize the exposure and help accelerate our ability to respond. And we got some really interesting things like XDR's progressive disclosure, which makes sure, again, as I mentioned, the right data at the right time empowers the analyst to make decisions sooner, reducing mean time to detect as well as mean time to respond. Cisco SOC assistance helps accelerate that response time as well as guide the analyst through the incident. So some care and feeding, augmenting the human. Now, secure access constantly is assessing risk tolerance and stepping up controls when trust deviates from the initial disposition. So again, we're adding a level of zero trust here. We're minimizing our exposure, adding resilience. And Cisco is a leader in enterprise firewall, micro-segmentation, and operational technology security. And this helps drive a platform-based approach when it comes to zero trust. It covers network, workload, and application. So if we can put these all in a restricted, confined bubble, the network, the host or workloads that the application's running on, and the application, we really make it hard for the adversary to punch their way out of that box, giving us more time to respond, as well as giving our tooling additional time to catch up. And if anything, compromise happens, the business is operational. Now, operational efficiency and complexity reduction. This is a big pain point for many in the security industry. Now, what we've done is we built the security cloud that simplifies IT management. It's augmented with AI assistant that unifies policy across the solutions, and it helps us automate those workflows. AI-powered troubleshooting and automated policy lifecycle helps us reduce the complexity within the environment and find where those trouble areas are very, very quickly. Now, AI ops predicts patterns. So there's predictive analytics, preventing performance constraints, traffic spikes, and stability. Remember, we want to get value out of the tools, not just for a specific persona, but for multiple different personas, security, networking, applications, and so on. The goal here is to reduce the operational tax. Now, one of the things that I love doing is work to understand where are the gaps. So understand those executive drivers, the threats and risks to the business. Where are your existing investments? Where are we getting value? How can we get additional value out of those investments? And really drive towards a prescriptive-based outcome that you can drive towards and all capability-driven. Not Cisco-focused, but capability focused. And the goal here is to drive both tactical needs and strategic outcomes that ultimately align to those business executive drivers. Now, finally, Cisco is a leader when it comes to investment and acquisition when it comes to security. Now, security acquires to accelerate value that supports best of solution. Cisco, as I mentioned, innovates in lots of different areas, which is exciting. But at times, in order to add additional value, an acquisition is required. And you can see, since 2007 to 2024, we're talking well north of $30 billion in acquisitions. And there's lots of exciting ones, like ORT and identity threat detection and response. You've got things like Splunk and all the things that Splunk provides. You've got Isovalent that provides the mechanism for which we're driving towards HyperShield. You've got Duo and, and Identity and Multi-Factor Authentication, and it goes on and on. Recently, Robust Intelligence and Snap Attack. So again, Cisco's here for the long haul, and the goal here is to build best of solution when it comes to security. Now, part two, we'll talk about some of the building blocks. We'll actually build on them and show you a little bit more around where the capabilities exist in the Cisco security portfolio.